and we've made some configuration changes, so we're going to need to clear our cache. And then we're also going to need to um, get rid of this to HTML method. Um, that's because we want the natural um, to HTML that reads from a template file to take over. And one final thing that I've changed here, um, I've overridden fetch view. Um, this is something I do in some of my uh, block template blocks. Um, I've overridden fetch view to set the um, script path to be a folder within my module. Um, this way I can store templates outside the normal design hierarchy. Um, not always the right thing to do, but um, I find, well, especially for these demos, it makes it easier to contain everything. So that means we're going to need template files which, um, as I just said, are going to be in a template within my module. Uh, we have video.phtml, which, you know, just has um, the object embed code, same as we did before. And then we're going to have this second thing called link, which creates a link to the video. So let's save that. We've got a template. We have cleared our cache, I think. So let's get, well, actually, let's not get rid of the widget at the time. Let's just double click on it to edit the existing widget. I didn't know you could do that until a few days ago. So, you know, neat. We can see we have this new data property called template, and it's the embedded video, or we can change it to a hyperlink. So we insert the widget. It's inserted. We save and continue the edit. And we come back to our page. And all of a sudden, we have check out this video link. And if we click on that, brings us there. So now our widgets have gone from being something that could just display. Ah, be quiet, people. Hope you didn't have to hear that. So we all of a sudden we've gone from something that has, um, we could only display a video with it, any video, but only display the video. Now we could take the data in that widget and use it in different contexts. It could be used to create a link. It could be used to create an embedded video. Um, anything you could think to do with a YouTube video, you could create a template to do that. So um, this is, we're starting to get into powerful CMS-like features. Um, the last thing, uh, we're going to show you about widgets is um, and uh, just so you know like uh, you could maybe just an idea um, you could set like a title parameter that would um, allow you to set a title for your links or you know set a title to be used anywhere including the links so you know feel go nuts with the data parameters that's the larger point the final thing we're going to show you though is um, what I think is one of the really interesting features, which is um, the ability for a widget to uh, restrict itself to particular sections of the page and for you to define widget context for where it shows up. So this is something that's not supported in the CMS widgets. The widgets you enter in the CMS areas, it's only supported in the um, instance widgets. So if we go into uh, widgets, Actually, first, let's go back. Let's, um, sorry, widget, your duty is done. You may now retire. We'll save that. We'll just show that it's been removed from the page. Okay. We're going to go into widgets, and we're going to add a new widget instance. And widget instances, remember, are, you know, a specific instance of a widget you can reuse in multiple areas. Um, so our YouTube widget. And, again, you have to pick which theme you're inserting this widget into. That's uh, just a restriction as to how it's been implemented. So we're in the default default template. I'm, yeah, pretty sure about that. Uh, continue. And let's just, uh, you got to give it a title. We'll just say our widget. Pick which store can show up in. Sort order compared to other widgets. Let's set some options. Now, the first thing you'll notice, it's like, hey, where's our templates? What happened? Don't worry. You'll 
we'll get back there. Nothing is going wrong. Um, we'll leave that video ID there. Um, and down here, this is somewhat confusingly uh, layout updates. Um, this is where you're telling Magento where you want your widget to show up. So you pick a page. We're going to say, um, let's say actually a specific page. Whoa, that's a lot of pages. Okay, we're not going to say specific page. <laughs> we are going to say all pages just for the sake of uh, simplicity. All pages. And then you get this choice of all these different blocks. There may be times, though, where you're like, you know what? I only want people to be able to add uh, a video to the content area or add it to, say, you know, the le on this can only show up in the left column or this can only show up in the footer. And that is what this supported blocks node. It's another top level node. It's not a parameter. It's by itself. And what you need to do here is for every node up here, you get to say, once you put nodes in supported blocks, that tells Magento, hey, this widget, there are restrictions to where it can go. Um, and this is what I meant earlier in the presentation when I said, you know, widgets know where they belong. Um, this uniquely named nodes, these are just nodes you need for containers. They don't, Magento doesn't look at them for any specific uh, semantic value. So um, I use very awkwardly named nodes to help me remind me which nodes are important and which aren't. But here, here's where you set block names. So we're telling Magento this block can only show up in the content block, block name content. Here we're telling Magento this can only show up in the block name left, which is the left column. Additionally, in addition to restricting it to particular areas, within each of those areas, we can then tell Magento, oh, also, by the way, when someone inserts a, a widget into the content area, it can only use these specific templates. When we insert something into the left column, we can only use these templates. Um, this name, as video, is driven by what we set as the template parameter up here. So before we save this and you know clear out our cache, normally when you, you pick your block re reference and you get to pick which template it shows up in. What we're going to see, since we've said you only get to use AS, as video, you only get to use as link. Um, if we save this and then clear out our cache, and then come back and do these slow reload. We're going to add our lad update. We're going to say display on all pages. We look in block reference. Boom. Only can insert into the main content area. Only can insert into the left column. And if we pick the main content area, we can only pick the embedded video template. If we pick the left column, we can only pick the hyperlink template. So all of a sudden, widgets have gone from being a way to insert blocks into widgets have become a way to define specific types of content and define how those types of content should show up in different areas of your site. Uh, this kind of shows that widgets, uh, beyond being a feature for a UI for entering blocks, they're the basis for a powerful content management system. Uh, whether Magento's core team is going to build that out or that's something the community is going to be drive, you know, who can say? But I really think it's worth learning the widget engine and learning what it has to offer. And um, it's a great way for you to help your clients. And if you're uh, an extension developer, a great way for you to hand over control of your blocks to your customers. And uh, that's what I wanted to tell you to imagine. Uh, we got cut off a little short. Hopefully you found that all useful. And uh, thanks a lot.